No matter what NHL team you cheer for, at some point you've certainly questioned a referee's call. And I can almost guarantee it's resulted in some choice words yelled at your TV or from up in the stands. But today we're discussing the one referee that may go down as the worst in the history of the National Hockey League. From questionable penalties to heated confrontations with players, this NHL referee's career was marred by incidents that left fans, players, and coaches alike shaking their heads in disbelief. Meet the most hated referee in NHL history, Stefan Auger. The Shane Doan Misconduct the first incident we'll examine with OJ involved a run-in with Phoenix Coyotes captain Shane Doan during a December 13, 2005 game against the Montreal Canadiens. At the conclusion of the Habs' 5-2 victory, Stefan OJ gave Doan a gross misconduct. For what you may ask? verbally abusing an official and making culturally insensitive comments against the referees. In the 2005 game, the NHL had, for the first time, assigned four francophone officials to work together and not only chose to do it in Montreal, but were very public about the decision. Doan said he was complaining to teammate Curtis Joseph about the officiating, telling the goaltender four Frenchman referees in Montreal, Cooge, figure it out. Well, OJ alleged that Doan had called them effing Frenchmen. Numerous French-Canadian players came to Doan's defense, including Devils goaltender Martin Brodeur. The NHL reviewed the allegations against Doan and in the end concluded that they were baseless. But it didn't end there, as in the weeks following the game, Liberal MP Denis Coderre demanded Doan be excluded from Canada's hockey team in the 2006 Olympics. Doan, who remained on the Olympic roster, launched a lawsuit against Coderre for $250,000, claiming Coderre had falsely accused him of making ethnic slurs. The MP responded with a countersuit for defamation, seeking $45,000 in damages. Both lawsuits were eventually dropped, but this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the referee who made the initial call. Whenever you connect to the internet at your favorite NHL team's arena, to place your bets or check on your fantasy team, you're putting your data at risk of being stolen. The same goes for other public Wi-Fi networks at cafes, malls, or airports. This sensitive information can include your passwords, photos, and other personal information. NordVPN is like the enforcer that protects the star player on your favorite NHL team. They're willing to drop the gloves and protect you from the prying eyes after your data, while also shielding you from malware, trackers, and ads. Browsing the internet without NordVPN is kind of like only watching the first game of a playoff series. That's because access to many websites is limited depending on your physical location. With NHL regional blackouts somehow still a thing in 2024, you're probably aware of that. I recently wanted to watch a Canucks game while traveling, so I opened NordVPN and set my location to Vancouver to bypass the regional blockout. It's that simple. NordVPN can protect up to six devices at the same time and is available on all browsers and has dedicated apps on all platforms. By going to nordvpn.com slash top hockey, you can get four extra months free on a two-year plan with NordVPN. The link is in the video description and pinned comment. So what are you waiting for? It's time to become safer with a single click. Vendetta against Alexander Burroughs. This is undoubtedly the game that OJ is best known for. On January 11, 2010, the Vancouver Canucks took on the Nashville Predators. During the warm-up skate, OJ approached Canucks forward Alexander Burroughs and threatened retaliation against him for an incident in a previous game in which OJ felt that Burroughs had embellished a call and made him look bad. Late in the first period, Daniel Sedin dished the puck from the corner over to none other than Alex Burroughs, who put it in the net and prompted the green men to go absolutely nuts. In the second period, Alexander Edler ripped one from the point, which was tipped by, you guessed it, Alex Burroughs. The game is tied 2-2. But Stefan OJ couldn't have that. In the third period alone, Burroughs was assessed four penalties, two of which were especially egregious calls. During a battle along the boards, Burroughs is tied up and pulled down by Predators defenseman and, funnily enough, future teammate Dan Hamhuse. However, it's Burroughs who is called for retaliating, shaking his head as he skates to the box. Then, with the game tied at 2 and 4.45 remaining in the third, Burroughs is called on this play a very soft interference call on Predators winger Joel Ward. Even Nashville players were visibly confused by the call. If this didn't affect the game, it's not the end of the world, right? But 
It did. With Burroughs and Henrik Sedin both in the box, Shea Weber scored the game-winning goal. The Predators and Stefan Auger beat Alexander Burroughs and the Canucks 3-2. As you can imagine, Burroughs had some choice words for Auger in his post-game media scrum. Quote, he said he was going to get me back tonight and he did his job in the third. Every two points are so huge and because of a guy's ego, it just blows everything out of proportion. When asked if he expected to be suspended for criticizing an official, Burroughs said, I don't know, but I think OJ should sit out the rest of the year, making calls like that. Making us look bad and every two points are so important in this league. We just blew two points because of his officiating tonight. Because of his comments after the game, Burroughs was hit with a $2,500 fine, the most the league could fine him, but avoided the suspension. The league investigated Burroughs' claims against OJ and concluded that they could not be substantiated, while stating, quote, referee OJ's intentions were beyond reproach. Conspiracy Accusations Moving on to March 12, 2011, when the New York Islanders visited the New Jersey Devils. The Devils took the game 3-2 in overtime, but Let's take a look at the penalties called. The first period, a five minute fighting major for each team and a roughing call on the Islanders. Okay, sure. The second period, a holding call on Travis Hamanick and a tripping on Ilya Kovalchuk. Nothing to see here. But the third period, four calls against the Islanders and one sticks out like a sore thumb. A game misconduct at 11.33 on Franz Nielsen? Did I read that right? One of the most quiet and kept to himself players in the league gets his first game misconduct. I'll give you one guess who made that call. So, what happened? Devils players, including David Clarkson, were allegedly insulting the Islanders coach and his assistants during the game, but went unpunished for their actions. When alternate captain Franz Nielsen spoke to OJ about what was going on, he was given what was the first game misconduct penalty of his career. After the game, Nielsen told reporters, I tried to talk to OJ because they had some guys who were saying things to Cappy. I've never seen that before. A guy talking to the other team's coach. So I went over to OJ to just let him know that this wasn't right, and he kind of lost it on me, told me to get lost. Islanders interim coach Jack Capuano stated that he requested but received no explanation from OJ on the Nilsson penalty, citing difficulty engaging the officiating crew throughout the entire game, saying, quote, Tonight was a little bit overboard for me. I don't think we're that undisciplined and they're that disciplined. We had 11 seconds of power play time, and we have a guy that has 28 penalty minutes, our assistant captain get thrown into the box for 10 minutes. To me, that's a lack of respect. Numerous Islanders players went on to accuse OJ of conspiracy, saying they felt the official saw the New Jersey Devils playoff run as more important than their own postseason push. The next day, the NHL senior vice president and director of officiating, Terry Gregson, confirmed to Newsday that the NHL was indeed looking into the matter. The blatant high stick. In a March 25, 2011 game between the Washington Capitals and Ottawa Senators, OJ blew another call, this time by not issuing a blatant high-sticking penalty. As Senators defenseman David Hale carried the puck in deep, Capitals center Matt Hendricks went in for a hit. Hale attempted to dodge it, but caught Hendricks in the face with his stick. The play was rightfully blown dead, and even the play-by-play -play announcers were confident a high stick was being called on Hale. But while Hendricks was having blood wiped from his face on the Washington bench, our main man, Stefan Auger, skated over to the penalty box and brought Hale out. No call on the play. As you can imagine, this brought out quite the reaction from Capitals head coach, Bruce Boudreaux, who let the officials know exactly what he thought of them. Retired or fired. On June 15, 2012, the NHL announced Stefan Auger's retirement. Allegedly, the 41-year-old wanted to spend more time with his wife and three children. The new was met with immediate speculation that the referee was actually fired. David Schultz reported that OJ had the right to appeal his retirement, but did not. A referee's career depends on having good marks from his supervisors, and OJ was struggling. He was not picked to work the playoffs for his final two seasons, and had only officiated 10 playoff games in his career that spanned 730 regular season games. Brian Murphy, the president of the NHL Officials Association, declined to confirm if OJ had no say in his retirement, but it was clear that if OJ did not retire then, the decision would have been made for him sooner or later. That didn't mean he was able to escape from what many fans and players thought he probably deserved before retiring. In the second period of a Capitals-Flyers game, he took a puck to the side of the head 
which prompted a chorus of cheers from the crowd. Oh, that puck hit the referee. That hit Again, during a game between the Philadelphia Flyers and New York Islanders just months before retiring in 2012, Auger took a high stick to the mouth from Andrew McDonald, which was again audibly celebrated by the crowd. We also have to mention the Los Angeles Kings St. Louis Blues game in which Stefan Auger laid a hit on Blues forward TJ Oshie while he was trying to carry the puck out of his own zone. Man, if only that one had gone the other way. Honestly, I'm surprised Oshie didn't receive an embellishment call. Today, Stefan Auger serves as an air quotes insider analyst for TVA Sports the Canadian French language channel that shows plenty of Montreal Canadiens games. And from what I've seen based on comments online, his takes are always dead wrong. Should we be surprised? Probably not. But what terrible referees or calls should we go over in a future video? Do you remember watching any of the mentioned Stefan Auger incidents? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like if you enjoyed and click subscribe for more NHL content. We'll see you in the next video.